Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and I love 12 inch laptops and I love Chromebooks and this one is both. This is the HP X360 in one. Uh, this just came out and this will uh, work as a laptop, but you can also flip it around and have it work as a tablet, including running Android apps. You can operate it in tent mode here, or you can put it into media mode. There's a lot of different ways to use this thing, and it's also very compact and portable. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this and some of the things you can do with a Chromebook in this configuration in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop and tablet is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The first thing you're gonna notice with this Chromebook is that its display, which is a 12 inch display, is more square than the rectangular displays we typically see on smaller Chromebooks. Uh, this is running with a three to two aspect ratio versus the normal rectangular 16 by nine. So as a result, you have a taller display which can show you more on screen. Uh, so this is good for reading, of course, and looking at websites and also working on documents. And then what's nice about this is that you get more real estate also when you flip it into the tablet orientation. So for example, uh, now that we are in tablet mode, uh, we have a lot more both in height and width here as we're scrolling through these web pages. And I think that uh, makes a pretty big difference for the kinds of things you might do with a Chromebook. As you'll see in a few minutes, it may not be as good with media given that most media is recorded now in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. But for most of the things I think a lot of folks do with these Chromebooks, uh, this is likely going to be a bit of an improvement there. Uh, the display is 1366 by 912, so not the highest resolution display, but in looking at this over the last couple of days, I think it's fine for the screen size here. Text is very crisp and easy to read. Uh, the colors are very nice. The uh, overall uh, display quality is quite good. So I think from the standpoint of achieving a nice productivity machine here, they've certainly done that. Uh, the display itself is a little bit on the dimmer side of things. So you'll certainly get a brighter display out of a MacBook or something that costs more. But again, I think it's more than adequate for uh, what they're offering here. Uh, price point on this one is $359. Here in the US at the moment, we have one configuration available, which is an Intel Gemini Lake N4000 processor. This is a very power efficient Intel chip. It performs nicely, given that it is a power efficient chip. It is fanless, so it's completely silent. And overall, we found it to be a good pairing based on what people typically do with Chromebooks. Uh, this one's got four gigs of RAM and only 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Outside the US at the moment, they have a version with a quad core N5000 chip, and there's an eight gigabyte RAM, 64 gigabyte storage option available as well. But again, here in the US at the moment, it is the 432 with the N4000 processor. Uh, weight on this one is 2.98 pounds or 1.35 kilograms. The keyboard deck here is metal. Uh, this is what they call their 3D metal design. It looks very nice and is very similar to some of the other more expensive laptops that they offer. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the hinge here feels pretty nice on the display overall, although as you can see, it does bounce a bit on you there. So uh, just be prepared for that. But generally, uh, the build quality here feels quite good. The only metal is on the keyboard deck, uh, but the plastic on the top and bottom feel very high quality and pretty sturdy. Now, battery life on this is pretty good. We're seeing about 10 to 11 hours doing the basics, things like web browsing and occasional video watching and that sort of thing. Uh, you will get slightly less battery life if you're watching a lot of videos on here. So if you're doing YouTube and Netflix nonstop, expect about eight hours or so with that. And then of course, if you start playing some Android games or some heavy duty Linux applications, uh, that might impact your battery life further. Uh, but if you're just doing web browsing, you know, turn the brightness down a little bit, and I think you could probably squeeze uh, 10, 11, maybe even up to 12 hours out of this device, which is very good for an Intel-based machine. And the keyboard and trackpad are very nice on this. Very good tactile feel on this keyboard. Good spacing on the keys, nice and big. Uh, you also have some really good travel on them too, so I was really picking this up pretty quick on typing. I was pretty pleased with that. Trackpad is also very nice. HP does do some nice trackpads on their other computers, and this one is equally good, uh, so no complaints about the input devices here. 
Uh, you also have some nice speakers on this device. Now these are upward firing when you have it in laptop mode here. The problem though is that if you move it into display mode like this, the speakers now fire into whatever they're sitting on and don't sound nearly as good. It'll get muffled a bit. Uh, you have some uh, ability to get decent sound in tent mode, but again, the speakers are now facing away from you and firing backwards on you there. So I think ideally the best audio quality you will get is when the laptop is in laptop mode, uh, just because those speakers are working as designed. But they have good stereo separation, very crisp and clear, uh, so no complaints on the sound, but it's going to vary based on what configuration you're operating under. And again, the ideal configuration here is in laptop mode. Uh, ports are pretty nice on here too. You've got a headphone microphone jack here, so if you wanted more consistent audio, you could plug some speakers into this. It also supports Bluetooth, of course, so a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones will work with it. Uh, this has USB Type-C, and this is a full service port, so this will deliver power along with video out and data in and out out of a single port. That's nice to see. You've got an uh, SD card slot here, a micro SD card, and this will sit flush with the computer here so you can leave it in all the time. And if you like to watch a lot of downloaded media, I would strongly suggest you get an SD card for this because you'll fill up that 32 gigabyte onboard storage really quickly with downloaded media. Uh, right here is your standby power switch. And then on the other side, we've got a volume rocker, a Kensington lock for securing it onto a desk. And then you've got a second USB-C port. So you can plug the power cable into either side. And what's nice is that there is a charging indicator on both sides too, so you know you're getting a charge when you plug it in. And then you've got a full-size USB 3 port here, and this will charge your phone or other device even when the laptop is turned off. So a lot of nice port flexibility with this one, and again, a pretty thin and light package overall. Now, one thing to know about Chromebooks is that they all have a fixed end of support date. This one's date is June of 2026. After that date, it will no longer get any software or security updates, but the Chromebook will continue to operate. So you could still use it, it just won't get updated. And that's common across all Chromebooks. In fact, there are many now that were purchased back in the earlier days of this platform that are now uh, still working, but again, not getting updated. And it's important to know about this before you buy, especially if you're looking at one of these used in about two or three years from the time I'm recording this video. Now we've got a lot of stuff to check out on here for performance. We've got web browsing to look at. Uh, this device also has pen support, so we'll see how the pen works with it. And then we'll look at Android and Linux apps too. So let's get to that. All right, so let's load up the Chrome web browser here and see how fast everything runs. We're going to load up the nasa.gov homepage here first. And as you can see, things really spring up very quickly here. Uh, very quick page rendering times. All the multimedia stuff seems to be working pretty nicely here too. Really snappy actually, a lot snappier than I expected it to be running, especially because it has one of these uh, lower powered Intel processors driving it. Uh, video playback is fine on here too. This is a YouTube video that was embedded on the NASA page. You can see that came to life pretty quickly. One thing to note though, is that when you're watching media like this, uh, you will see larger uh, letterboxing on the top and bottom versus a computer with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So on a regular rectangle screen, this video will fill up every inch of the screen. Here you're going to have some letterboxing top and bottom just given the different aspect ratio of the display. But I think it looks fine to me, uh, but you just won't have a screen filling video here as a result. Uh, but again, uh, really nice experience here overall. Great performance for both web browsing and video playback. Now, a little bit earlier, we hooked this up to a 4K monitor. Uh, the max it will do is 30 hertz out to that 4K monitor, but nonetheless, we were able to run a YouTube video, uh, which was a 4K 60 video with minimal drop frames. Uh, so overall, for media playback, I think it'll be a pretty good device whether you use the internal display or an external one. Now, we did run the browserbench.org spinometer test, and there we got a really good score of 74 on version 1.0 of that test and 45.4 on version 2.0. And as you'll see, it's running just slightly faster than a few other Windows laptops we've tested in the past, 
running with the very same processor. So there might be some optimization Google is doing now within Chrome OS to give some of these Intel chips a little bit more of an edge uh, because this is really performing better than I expected it to. Not you know, light years better, but certainly a little better than what we've seen in the past out of the very same chip, and that was pretty impressive. Now, as I mentioned, there is pen support for this device, and it will work with any USI compliant stylus. Uh, HP will have their own version available for about 60 bucks. It should be available pretty soon, if not already. And what's neat about it is that they've integrated a little USB-C connector into this to charge it. So it doesn't use any other batteries there. You just plug it in with the same cord that you get with the laptop to charge it up. It doesn't take all that long to charge, and it should run for quite a good length of time. And I was pleased to see, too, that they have a magnet on the side here to store the pen. Uh, so it'll snap onto the side here and it stays on pretty decently. You just want to make sure that the tip of the pen is pointed towards the back. But there's one little bit of oddness to this pen because if you get it too close to the side of the laptop here, you can see it throws off the sensor uh, that reads the position of the screen. So when I bring it over here, it actually puts the laptop to sleep or it might think it's going into tablet mode. So you want to keep the uh, pen here on the side, otherwise it might uh, throw off your uh, screen sensor. It was kind of odd that they put the sensor on the same side as where the pen goes, but uh, that's one thing you might encounter. But if you keep it on the side here, it should snap in and you're good to go. Let's take a look now and see how the pen performs. Now, Chrome OS has been getting a lot friendlier to more tablet-like experiences, and if you have a pen, uh, what you'll see on this Chromebook and many others is a little pen icon down here at the bottom. And if I go over to create a note, for example, it will load up the Android version of Google Keep, which is their note-taking application. And then any note that I write into this little notebook here will sync up with the rest of my Google account through Google Keep. And if I bring the stylus down here and start writing, I can just write my name, for example. And it's got good wrist detection. It was able to detect that I had a stylus attached. I can erase things. I can go ahead and maybe change the color of the pen uh, and do all sorts of good stuff. There's no pressure sensitivity to this. Um, so it's just going to basically work as a basic stylus, but if you like taking notes, you've got a nice big screen surface here to work with, and again, everything will sync up via Google Keep, and you will be able to get at those notes on other devices. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is show you some things that uh, Chrome OS does natively. So right now I've got a Google Doc here opened up, and of course if I tap the screen here to pull up the keyboard, uh, one of the things you'll notice, even if you don't have a pen, is the ability to draw instead. And if I write something out to say maybe how are you today, you can see it uh, tries to read my chicken scratch here and actually does a pretty good job of doing that. Uh, the text will fade away as you write. It'll also give you suggestions and all that good stuff. So there's a lot of ways that you can use pen input here. And it's really been nice to see that develop here on the Chrome OS platform. And of course, if you have a favorite Android app that works with a stylus, it will, of course, work here. Speaking of Android, let's see how it runs some of those Android apps. Now, you install Android apps on a Chromebook through the Google Play Store, just like you would on a mobile phone or tablet. If you've purchased apps on your phone or tablet and you're using the same Google account on your Chromebook, uh, those apps will be installable here without having to pay again. And there's a pretty decent library here. In fact, you'll be surprised by how many different Android apps are supported. Uh, things like Netflix are running. Uh, you can also install and run the Android version of Microsoft Word and Excel and everything. So if you do a lot of Microsoft stuff and prefer some of their applications, you can use their Android app here on the Chromebook. Uh, it's not going to give you all the features that you'd have on Windows, but you can you know, get into your documents and edit them and everything. And you can also have multiple Android apps here running side by side at the same time. So I've got uh, the Google Play Android app here along with the Microsoft Word one. That seems to be working pretty nicely there. Uh, you also can run things like Netflix. And what's cool about Netflix is that because this is the Android version of Netflix, if you want to download stuff for offline viewing, uh, you can download content just like you would on your phone or tablet. And I believe now you can download those movies to your SD card that's plugged into the uh, device as well. So you have some great options for travel. Uh, most of the major media uh, applications out there like Disney Plus and Prime Video, all of those, of course, are accessible to you here through your Chromebook. Uh, you can also play a lot of games on here, the casual ones mostly. So this is Goat Simulator. Uh, now, it doesn't play so well with the keyboard and trackpad, and you'll find that with a lot of Android games. They're really not all that friendly to 
uh, the keyboard and trackpad combination. But in this instance, we could just put it into uh, uh, display mode here, for example, to get a better angle on the screen here. And as you can see, it plays pretty decent on here. Uh, it might be a little faster on a top-end tablet or mobile phone, but still you'll have a lot of games that you can play. Again, mostly casual games, and you'll struggle a little bit getting keyboard controls to work on them. If you have a game controller and the game is compatible with it, uh, you can plug in the game controller in one of the USB ports or over Bluetooth and be able to access it that way. So you do have some gaming options here. Uh, one thing to note though on games is that if you're running a higher end game like Call of Duty, uh, that game loads but then almost immediately crashes. So there's a lot of stuff that may not work so great, but I have found over the years that Google has been slowly improving Android compatibility. So each update might get you closer to getting something to work. Now one last thing to check out here and that is Linux support. Google added official Linux support to Chrome OS about a year and a half ago and it's making its way even onto some of the smaller lower end devices like this one. Uh, so for example we can load up the LibreOffice suite here and this is their spreadsheet application. Uh, this is an open source Linux app that's running natively on the Chromebook and you can see it integrates itself right into the rest of the operating system quite nicely. So I could have uh, this running alongside an Android app, for example, on top of having the native Chrome OS web browser running. It's really cool, and if you ever wanted to get into Linux, a Chromebook might be the best way to start playing with it, because you really can't break the Chromebook by playing around inside of the Linux containers there, and it works quite well. Another neat thing is that you can play Steam games, provided the game that you want to play is available with a Linux version. And of course, you have to run a game that this laptop is capable of running, given that it's not a very fast machine. Uh, so I'm going to load up Shovel Knight here. It'll take a second for it to load, so we'll jump back when it's ready. All right, so here we go. We've got Shovel Knight running here. It seems to be running pretty close to full speed. Now, this is a game that will typically run pretty well on one of these Gemini Lake machines. Uh, but remember, we are pretty limited here in performance, so it's not going to run uh, the latest and greatest AAA titles, but a lot of these older games and games like this that are kind of retro-inspired uh, should function just fine on this laptop, but might require a little bit of coaxing to get working initially. But I've been really impressed overall with just how far uh, Google has come with this. Uh, this will also support the GPU on the Intel processor. You do have to take some steps at the time I'm recording this video to uh, implement that feature, but that is how these games now are starting to run uh, pretty close to their full speed. So we've seen a lot going on here with Chrome OS, both with Android and Linux support, and these are certainly a lot more than just web browsers now. And again, if you're looking for a fun computer to play around with, a Chromebook really is something to take a look at. And this Chromebook is quite nice. I really like the screen orientation on it here. Uh, it's a pretty good tablet. Uh, and uh, great speakers on it as well, and great battery life too, all in a really nice offering from HP and kind of a unique one uh, given the uh, screen orientation here. So that's going to do it for the HP Chromebook 12B. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh. Logic GR and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.